had a Waze incident. And I know that Alex mm, is super that's excited so right funny. now. Since the last show, was <laughs> hanging on me for using Waze and saying that I had, it didn't work. So I had a Waze. I had a Waze incident, um, and on my Waze incident, um, the the Waze so we're accurate. we're at a completely new studio. So everybody that's thinking, what the heck were you doing on Waze? You've been doing this show for seven months now. Um, we're in a brand new studio. I'm super excited. The studio is gorgeous. It is a yeah, really, really nice place. studio. I'm really excited nice. about it. And it really um, nice. I'm, I'm really happy that we're here because the last studio wasn't bad. It was just... Doesn't it smell like Grandpa's building? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't smell like, like my Grandma's house. Hey, don't knock it down. We were there for a long time. Hey, man, I love my Grandma. Okay. So nice get your roots, man. You know what I mean? Moving on up. Moving on, on up. up. So we have a view... Uh, I'm checking out the David view right now. David, David, broke, tried, David just broke the microphone off the thing. He's now holding I have a view of the hand. 836 and 57th Street. So about um, ways, we so. didn't make it. We didn't, we didn't bring us here. Nope. That's far, far away. <laughs> ah, you mean, I've, got, I've got to hold this microphone for the rest of the time I'm that I'm here. <laughs> so, take a picture of me, please, because this needs to go on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook Live right now, this is my, my microphone situation currently. The stand it's is up smooth, here, brother. and my it's microphone awesome. is here. You can tell we're in a brand new studio. I look like Michael Bolton. I don't know about that, man. Maybe Michael Jackson. Oh. In his latter days. Uh, <laughs> same nose. Same nose. Same nose. Same nose. Wish I had that nose. Oh, man. Again, you can reach us at 786-529-5273. You can find us on our website at sep, uh, at thecursteam.com. He almost gave you the phone number again. It's at thecursteam.com. So today we're filled with amazing information. We're going to talk on some stuff today that, that I think was inspired by our team meeting. So we have our team meeting every Thursday morning. Um, and we uh, had a really, really, really effective team meeting today. Eric wasn't there, so he'll be a crappier realtor than the rest of us <laughs> for, the next, for the next quarter. Uh, <laughs> he had he had some showings with an amazing client. No, by no, the way, the bridge was up. The bridge, the bridge was, was up. up. That's why he, wasn't there. he had an amazing client. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I met up with him and his client, and so, sometimes you have clients that really drag you through the dirt in any business. This is not just real estate. And then sometimes you have some clients that you just don't want to let go of. Yeah. So we showed up like right on time for the radio show today because we were having so much fun with this guy and his wife. Um, what an amazing couple. They're, they're awesome. Time. They're awesome. Huh? I was here on time. You were here on time. I was here on time. Alex is I was here always here on time. Minutes early. He beat the bridge early. He used the men's room. He, <laughs> he used that old. Have, he had that old Marine Corps motto in his head: "If you're not 15 minutes early, you're late." No, you know what? Yeah, he loved Weekend it. Road he too, got it. I was on Weekend Road, and I, I was, I was like, "Oh man, I kind of want to hit this store real quick." And then I waited time. I was like, "David's gonna kill me if I'm not at this new place. I don't even know where it is. Plus, I gotta use Waze, and it already failed me last time. If I say Waze failed, he's not gonna believe me. Nope, negative. So, <laughs> Store. So let me leave her extra early, sure enough. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a little bit about, uh, more about myself and my team. Uh, we are six strong, right? We're six strong now. Six strong now. We're six strong now. Uh, so adding Roberto. Roberto. His name is Bob, guys. Bob. Some yeah, people Bobby. call him Bob. Some people Bobby. call him Roberto. Or Some people Roberto. call him Bobby. He's Roberto to me. <laughs> <laughs> Roberto. <laughs> Um, and today on the show, of course, we have Eric Morales. What's up, buddy? Hello. We got Alex Kurz, my brother. What's going on? What's up, man? We got Jennifer Munizaga in the house. Hello, everyone. And we got Jessica in the background without the mic. But yell. She, yell, yell something. Stop. Yell. <laughs> Jessica's responsible, Jessica's responsible for, for uh, ensuring that we're fully equipped with yellow Red Bulls. Smart water. All our uh, smart water. So all our equipment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All our equipment. Hey, and uh and uh what else? And love. And lots of love. And love. Yeah. She tells us how to get here. She, Con tells mucho, mucho amor. To get. she tells us how to get here. She meets us downstairs at the new studio and is like, You're late, let's go. Um it's it's awesome. No, it's it awesome. sounds more like you're late. It's like having it's like having a second brain. No. She tries not to be mean. With a mad face. <laughs> yeah, with the mad face, with the mad face. All right, so I'm David Kurz. Uh, I'm the leader of the Kurz team. Um, we're at Douglas Elliman Real Estate. Douglas Elliman is the fourth largest real estate company in the nation. 
Um, we are amazing in every way, by the way. I just want to put that out there. $22 billion in sales last year. Um, and in, uh, in, in South Florida alone, we did $2.5 billion in real estate in 2015. Uh, it's, been, it's been amazing. Uh, for us, we've been, we had a record-setting year last year, and we intend on surpassing that record this year. As a matter of fact, we're very close now to passing what we did in all of last year. So that's the first time the team hears that. And, uh, and I know no, <laughs> so the surface to our we're just board. scratching the surface. You're absolutely right. We're scratching the surface to where we are intending to be this year. Um, and we're super pumped about it, you know? Um, what else can I tell you about myself? I have a master's in international business. I've been in real estate for over a decade. I love this business. I'm luxury certified, mm -hmm. short sale certified. Um, we help veterans. We help veterans. We're very strong with veterans. We have a hometown heroes program. Our hometown heroes program is focused, focused solely on veterans, on teachers, on police officers, and on firefighters. So yeah. basically our first responders and the people who need it the most, right? Um, we focus very strongly on these kinds of things, and that's who we are. So we're Alex and I are third generation uh, real estate professionals. So it's in our DNA. Um, we, Alex, you've been doing this how long with me now? Yes. Almost 16, eighteen months, right? Almost. 16, yeah, sixteen, 16 months, months yeah. now, and we're kicking who's butt this counting? year. This year is going to be counting? fantastic. Sixteen months, twenty-seven days, and eight hours. But who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> and Alex can attest that working with me that feels more like twenty-seven years. Fifteen. <laughs> no. I'm not gonna say that on the radio. <laughs> Alex is like going great. Goes home. Mom's like, uh, "What's going on, bro? You're in your twenties." <laughs> This can be a stressful business. Okay? Oh my God. I'm not gonna Did he just say third radio, nose? Did he just say third a, nose? We was on a roller coaster ride over the last week, and my nerves. So David, let me just say, David, obviously, like he just said, is in the business for a decade. I've been in the business 16 months. I'm still experiencing experiencing things for the first time. So David's <laughs> something falls on David's plate, and he's like, uh, "All right." Let me keep it moving. So, and it fell on my plate, and I'm like, Aah! and I yeah, and it's like the end of my world. Like, like I'm like, crazy. what's gonna happen? I'm freaking <laughs> out. I'm, bring, I'm texting him like novel paragraphs. He's like, dude, chill, <laughs> chill out. You can't do anything. Just let it be. Yeah, Alex, Alex texts me. You know, I'm on the I'm on the phone with the client, and Alex texts me. He's like. Bro, 911, call me, emergency. <laughs> so after we like cleared everything up, you know, I, I, I text him back. I go, don't ever, ever call me, text me 911, bro. You know, like he called, he called me twice and he said, hey, it's important, call me. I said, okay, it's important. As soon as I finish this call with my client, I'll call him. He says 911. I said, I could tell my client, I got to call you back. Because in my mind, in my mind, I pictured Alex the with the, the engine of his car sitting on his lap. He nosedived into some like garbage truck. There's like banana splits on his head, you know? And he's like, he wants to give me his last will and testament, you know? He's like, please tell my mom and dad I love him, you know? <laughs> Listen, so that's the way I imagined at, it. I'm getting screamed at on the phone, and I'm just, I've never encountered somebody this oh, hostile it's that before. Story. That story. And yes, I immediately, awesome. I immediately, I'm like, you know, this guy's like threatening my life. I'm like, I'm just, immediately, like, you know, I'm gonna go get my gun Alex and shoot you. Alex grew up you. with two women and, and his yeah. mom, and so he's totally not used to this. So this guy's screaming at me, and I'm like, oh my god, I don't know how to handle this. So I call David, he doesn't answer, and I'm texting him. I'm, meanwhile, I'm like driving I'm, i pulled over to the side of the road i'm having like a mental breakdown over this and finally he calls me and he's like all right i gotta call you back he tells me the whole story and my response is all right bro i gotta call you back <laughs> <laughs> he must have stayed like oh my dude, god dude i was just i just hung up the phone and i sat in my car for like and i know he gets five mad at minutes me i sat in the car for like five minutes in his brain he's like he doesn't care he doesn't care <laughs> my big brother doesn't care you know <laughs> In my mind, I'm like, that's not a big deal. We'll deal with that in a few minutes, you know? Uh, but I've encountered a lot. 
in the in the last what 11 years I've been doing this you know mm -hmm. so I've encountered a lot in the last 11 years and and you I guess over time things you know I would imagine I don't remember but I would imagine in year one and two I would have freaked out if something like that happened. I would have thought, yeah. like, my career's over, yeah. you know? That's what was going through my head. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> fired. They're going to take my license from me. And we didn't turn out I didn't do anything wrong at all. But, yeah, I was freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jen, who are we sponsored by? So this show is brought to you by New World Title with Rudy and Melissa. Their office locations are in Davie, Doral, Brickle, Miramar, Boca, Kendall, Coral Gables, and I can't remember the other two, and I didn't write those down, but Did I they think open it's Sunny in Isles. Sunny Isles, Boca, yeah. and Fort Boca. Lauderdale. I think yes. they have another location out there. So um, go to their website, www.newworldtitle.com. That's N-U-W-O-R-L-D-T-I-T-L-E.com. And check that out. Check out their locations. They're definitely available for you. And their phone number is 305-403-6250. Who are they looking At, for? Huh? They're looking for Melissa. Give me that Speak number again. 305-403-6250. <laughs> I put Facebook Live on break and he just like throws a smile on and waves. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a Miss America wave. You saw it. I cupped it. It was cute. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> I'm going to see it on the re on the record. Eric gets on the nervous record. Under attention. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He gets mad nervous. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the preface for the rest of our show. Uh, you heard a little story about how Alex and I have had, uh, we had kind of like a tough week, or he had pretty much a tough week. I kind of dealt with it as it came along. And um, it's been uh, it, it's been a roller coaster a little bit. And we, came out, and we came out winning. <laughs> that's serious. Yeah, and we came out winning at the end because, you know, we're... We are very ethical and very careful with the things that we do as a team. One of the biggest things that I tell everyone on the team is don't put your real estate license at risk for anything in the world. Yeah, you it's know, not worth it. it's not worth it. You, this is your career. You've chosen it to be your career path. Yeah. So focus on your career. Focus on what you're doing in your life so that you can continue to be better and better and better. And no one, no one, no one should ever, ever have the power to take that away from you. On that note, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. So here you have to talk like into the microphone. Because if, you, if you're talking like this, you're good. If you're like this, you're not good. I can tell because I'm listening on here. I can tell when you're off. Yeah, it's not like the other ones. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, you got to tighten this thing. You're probably the first one to use this. So you can lift these. Here's the microphone. These are really nice. You know how much these things are? They're like $1,700 a piece. Cut the ball. Cut the ball. <laughs> you gotta really be careful, bro. It's off. She can't hear What if the show comes back on? I would have seen Guys, Miles. I'm laughing already. It's awesome. Oh my Louis! What's up, buddy? Alright. Yeah. You can't hear it on Facebook, though. Oh, really? That's too bad. We got some jams in the back. Really big things. We get some really big rings. Just you and I. <laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Curse Team Real Estate Radio Show. Thank you for always joining us every Thursday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. We are in 880 The Biz, where money talks. You can find us every week here. Where every week we're live, unless we happen to be completely out of the country. And then we're not live. Then we record. We re-record. <laughs> so I'm very glad that, that, that we have such a great audience. I've been getting so much great feedback on our show. That really excites me. Yeah, uh, because, definitely. I mean, I remember when we first started this show, I was like, like is it going to work? You oh know, like. God, what are we doing? What did we mess up? But no. No. And, 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 and it's, a it's hey, let that. me tell you something. It's really hard not to mess up on the show. It's, hard. Hard. it's really hard. It's good. You you have oh, to really say time. everything in your head before it comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, true. you you don't really have the liberty because this, this is live radio. Especially guys. me and Eric. Yeah, zero filter. <laughs> yeah, it's, we must it's be pretty difficult to premeditate <laughs> what you're gonna say, and you want it to come out good and say something like intelligent, or if you're trying to be funny, you want it to sound right. So and it's or very difficult. You want to sound? If the microphones are off, like. 
It's all, it, it's all out you want to sound, you want to sound edumacated. Edumacated. Yeah, 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 that's very important. With your 10th so. grade education, you know. So you're yeah. a philosopher now. I'm a philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we want to talk about some cool stuff, and and I think that that um, Eric, you've been in the business for uh, five months. Five months, yeah. Five months. Alex has been in the business for 16 months. Jen, you've been in the business for three plus years? I, about three years, yeah. All right, I've been in the business for 11 plus years. So I think that it would be amazing today if we focused on uh, pursuing, you know, the topic of pursuing a career in real estate. And I think that, that we're gonna get uh, very different responses from everybody, right? And I think that it could give a real outlet to listeners right now who may be considering becoming a real estate professional um it could also give an outlet to maybe guys who just started in the business um or 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 folks that are maybe a couple years in and they're looking to break the ceiling to the next level yeah you know and and honestly breaking the ceiling is not always easy it's it's a lot of times <coughs> it's very difficult to do what you do and then you get to a point where maybe you're doing okay, but you want to do more. And and you have this glass ceiling above you, and you need to, you know, take a hammer and, and break that ceiling and get above it. You just don't know where to find the hammer. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that, that I've been at that Let's point see. many times in my career. I mean, over a decade, you yeah. you you know, you get to that point several times. And and I even think that I've gotten to that point again now in my career, because I think to myself, and and Jen knows because Jen hears it from me all the time. But you know, I think I got to a point in my career where I said, okay, I have a radio show, I write a magazine, I've got multiple websites, I have a blog, uh, I have a farm area, I have this, I have that, I have this, I have that. I spend you know obscene amounts of money marketing our properties. Uh, so what's next? Right? Yeah. What's the next step for me? Yeah. And there's the, always room for improvement. It's just figuring out where you are at the moment, I think. In the, and same, obviously, that uh, obviously, because there's, there's no matter how great you get in this business, there's room for improvement. That's yeah, right. That's, right. That's, like a, that's like a universal law, man. I mean, that even applies to personal life, you know? It applies to everything. There's always room for improvement all around. So, you know? I think that you're right. It applies to your personal life. It applies to your business life. It applies to, to life in general. Um, and I think that, that, that there's always room for improvement. I think that, listen, I know my numbers and I know that there are people doing much more than I am in this business. And, and, and I admire that. There's, they've obviously broken a ceiling that I haven't been able to break or they're doing something yes. that I haven't been able to do. And so I'm working hard to pass yes. those. The key word there is yes. Yeah, of course. And and you're working hard to pass those and you're working hard to, to grow and develop as an individual, develop as a team, develop as a business, yeah. right? And develop inside, you know, and self-development, which is extremely important because if you can't Develop yourself. Develop yourself. There's you can't do anything for anybody else. It's it's you know I always tell people if you can't help yourself if you can't you know if you can't raise yourself or take care of yourself don't try to have a child right you don't raise a child if you can't uh, um, lead yourself don't try to lead a team yeah you know and so that's basically what it boils down to so I want to ask each of you and let's have some fun with this right because I know there's some let's crazy start examples right move on. we start <laughs> At the other end, you know what throw me under the can, you, can you start with the low? <laughs> I'm in the least amount of time in the business. That's right. I'm not I the mean, lowest. No. Honestly, can you start with honestly, the lowest of the I think low? It's important to consider even before getting into the business. You know what I mean? Like before getting into the business, the minute you tell somebody, I'm going to be a real estate agent, I'm going to go take my license, and a lot of people are like, oh, that's so easy to take. You know, what are you doing? You know what, and, and they really downplay this career. And, and and honestly, to me, There's my a... first experience, wait, my first experience, <laughs> when I told somebody that I was going to be in real estate, they told me, you're going to starve, is what they told me. And I looked at it, I was so mad, I was so mad, I said, you know what, no, there is no way somebody's going to dictate how I, how my business is going to turn out. I, I haven't even started, and you're telling me I'm going to start. I'm going to fail, yeah. Yeah, so I was really, you know, and it's, it's funny because a lot of people do it just for fun, just to... Or to buy and sell their own homes or something like that and get their commissions. In my case, I wanted that. 
I wanted this to be, you know, my career, my my business. You I know? just wanted so. to hang out with Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Yes. <laughs> I ended up. There's with two him. sides to that though. So there's there's the there's the people out there who think that oh you're a real estate agent you make no money you don't do anything you there's know there's those extreme. people who feel that and then there's the other side of that like people you know in my age bracket or even anybody that I've spoken to and they're I'll be like oh uh, you're a real estate broker and they automatically assume that I am just rolling in millions and that it's easy rolling in millions and it's easy. And I'm like, hey but let me tell you something <laughs> yeah like the leads just come and Douglas yeah. and especially if you say oh Douglas I'm like, oh I know them yeah. especially I'm from New York people from New York they automatically assume it's just like hey here's this uh here's this check you know what I mean it's like <laughs> <laughs> like, it just comes in, or like, there's an X Doesn't amount, like, Douglas Elman, just like, here's X amount of uh, listings this month for you, and, you know, it just comes that way, and it's like, nah, bro, like, <laughs> no, bash. it's not like that. No. And so, I, I um, th- hey, did I ever tell you the funny story with Alex? <laughs> No. I got a great story. Which one? Everybody. There's like a thousand. <laughs> I don't even know which one anymore. So, which, so did I ever tell you that story about Alex? Like, so where's this going to go? Am I going to be embarrassed? Alex Am I comes be and he takes the class, right? The real estate <laughs> class. He takes a real estate class. He does the crash course. He calls me. He says, what should I do? I said, take the one-week course. Get it all in your skull. And then immediately after that, take the, take the test. You know what I mean? And so I said to he goes, all right, fantastic. That's what I'm going to do. So he's in New York still. He comes down to Miami. He stays with my dad. He, he does the one week class, right? Schedules the test. Like I'm telling him, hey, you got to go to this website. You got to do that. We're pumped, right? He fails the first time, right? Which is Which normal. Which is not unusual. Yeah, it's not unusual. I've known people that have failed He fails it the like first time, times. right? So he says, I got to take it like right away. You're allowed to take it. I think it's like a couple days later, right? Two yeah, days within later. the week or so. So yeah, the only hours. place that was available for him to take the test was in Key, Key West. West. Oh wow. no! Oh, that's like two <laughs> hours from here. Yeah. Yeah. So he goes, so he goes all realistic. the way to Key West with my dad, right? And he takes the test, and I t- and I tell him, "Hey, let me know if you pass. I'll meet you in Marathon, and we'll like celebrate, you know." So he takes the test, and he passes, and we meet in Marathon, and we were like, "We go, hey man, so now you got to take the Miami test." Oh God! And he, goes, <laughs> and he goes, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> test. So, well, you pass the test in the keys, so you can sell real estate in the keys, but you can't sell real estate. <laughs> so <laughs> wrong, dude. Bro, I was like in and such a good mood. Me. I had like my beer. I'm like, "Woo! Here comes the money!" And then he's like, "Hey, you can, you can only sell real estate in the keys." I the smile drop right off my face. <laughs> oh God! Yo, we like, can't no, just messing with you. We can't even hold it past thirty seconds, yeah. man. It, the expression on his face made me bust out laughing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. No, I was like, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's a Florida Anybody test. Anybody out there who's taken the real estate test knows you're you're hammering yourself with questions until you get in that room. You're constantly going yeah. over it in your head. And the second you pass, it's like that's it. Right out right. of your head. You immediately stop thinking about the answers in the test. <laughs> you're so just like done. So let me think about this for a second. After you pass the test, right? Mm-hmm. Each every one of you. After you pass the test, what did you think was going to happen? That was it. I, was I need to go get my license hung with somebody. Right? Yeah. So, but I'm, I guess what I'm saying is like elaborate on that a little more. Like, like a lot of people take this test. I was like, yes, I passed it the first time. Yeah. A lot of people <laughs> take this test and they assume that this is an easy business. Yeah. And it's not a very easy no, business. It's, not. it's mm-hmm. a very the test is the easiest part. part. Okay, the test is you. the easiest part. The test is the easiest part. Yeah. It's 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 not and that's like, the best way it's put. This business takes you and tests you every single yeah, daggone day. So every deal, let every me tell you, I left the, the thing and I knew that I had to schedule interviews. Okay, so with you guys, it was, it was easier because me, you were I with already, David. I knew where I was exactly. going. Exactly. In my it, it case, set. I had to see which company I was going to go with. So I remember walking into Century 21 and sitting down with the broker of that company. And I was like, well, I want one of the desks. Like, how do I get a desk? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> behind oh, the nice. glass, not outside, nice. behind the glass. Nice, you were negotiating from the jump. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, this is what we offer. And he started going off on what they offer. And I go, okay, so how do I get the desk? He said, well, in order to get the desk, you have to sell $2.5 million a year. I was like, oh, that's a piece of cake. I'll do that in no time. <laughs> I entered Keller Williams for the first time, and it's my first year. I, made, I, I, I probably just had a rental. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I found the dollar rental my first half a year because it was during the half of the year, so 
I'm gonna you know when you got that check, you were like, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, Heck yeah. Boom, boom, <laughs> yeah, that's you're it. Walking, you're it's walking, on now. You're walking to, the, you walk into the account <laughs> office like you just hit the roof Ooh. of Wall Street with what kind of money, you know? You're that's like, it. The snowball effect has yeah, started. It's coming <laughs> now. It's all going to go. What I got from that story is pretty much girl. that she's tougher than me and Alex. That's all I got from it because she's like, you know, I have to go apply somewhere. What, what, did we get freebies here, Alex? Is that yeah, what you just said? We got freebies. I wouldn't consider it a freebie. I would say that we were. Yeah, immediately yeah. desired that's before we even though. passed our that's test. Right. That's all bad. We were desired. High five. Yeah, we were desired. Wait, 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 wait. We passed our test. I love it. I love it. Another one? Boom. All right, all right. All right. All right. All right. Boom. Boom. Take some of that. Alex and Eric will both tell you, and Jen can tell you, Although they already had a plan in place to come work with me, it is not easy working out. No. No, no, it's not. And so I, I don't, <laughs> I, I, do look, not. in my, I, I believe in, in the hustle. I believe in, in fighting for, for your food. I believe in hunting, right? And so I don't believe in giving <laughs> things away. I don't believe in, in saying, hey, I, not only did I take the phone call from the lead, I prepped them for you, talked to them for you, I got all their information, I did this, I did that. Here you go, just go show them how. I don't believe in that. You want to experiment with that. that. Can, all of us. Yeah, yeah, all you want to experiment. We can just see how it goes. It's like sure. towards the end, sure. you see a sign that says failure. That is, that is exactly where you're going. If, if all you wanna, you're doing is say, if you want to try that and then also hire a transaction coordinator and then, you know. And then you do absolutely nothing. <laughs> you can do yeah. so, all And I can just show property. And maybe, maybe I can hire you as showing us. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the proof that theory correct. Imagine that. would be so sweet, dude. <laughs> but it's not it's not easy working for David Kurz, I'll tell you that right now. And but, but or living with him. But I think ooh, 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 bah, Whoa. Bah, please, boom! Please, and boom please, goes the dynamite. Please, boom goes the dynamite. Please, please please excuse me while I take a sip. We're gonna take a short break. break. I need I need to take a sip of my Red Bull. Somewhere so right I now can, I Kermit can, the Frog is I sipping his tea. Contest, <laughs> I can contest that right there. Because that was completely unacceptable. Oh man. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm gonna let you guys listen to traffic while I think this one through. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I was on. Oh, do you see? Do you guys on Facebook see how Jen treats me? This is absolutely this ridiculous. Is Live on the radio, she says it's hard to lyric with me. What's up with that? What do you think about that? Huh? I, I, I concur. The pop what are we say hi, guys. Him right that, uh, punishment Hello. is redirecting uh, uh, to the Hello. Oh what? Redirecting all your leads to the yeah. Did anyone hear us right now? No. no. Yes, Facebook Live. <laughs> Fossey Buki for the Mannions. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> How do I know that? That's a kind of translation. You're the only one that didn't have any. What the? <laughs> well, I can smell it. Somebody did. Keep <laughs> smell it. I only have one. Well, I smell it. You're just telling me. What? Pizzazz. Booze. Oh, Mary, David's I only had one is the bottle. One bottle. That's all I had. Oh, I only had one. Only had one. <laughs> only had one. Only had one. <laughs> it's you I smell right? Yes. It's Welcome back to the Curse Team Real Estate Radio Show. And Jimmy Day. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Curse Team Real Estate Radio Show. You can catch us at 786-529-5273. Again, on a slower note, that's 786 529 Five two seven three. Write it down. Save it in your phone. Uh, put King David the Curse team on there as a as a as a put name. An alert for every morning at six o'clock. That's the number you need to call. Yeah, what every morning six o'clock in the morning. Call that number. Yes, he will pick up. <laughs> Are these guys aware of our nicknames? <laughs> Do huh? our audience know our nicknames? Do they know our nicknames? Yeah. I don't think we should That's put that right. out there. I don't know if we should put that out there. It might be too much for them? It might be too much right. for them. Maybe I'm sorry. Maybe I'm halfway through the season. Though. Seriously, Eric the Dragon Slayer, I don't think oh, that we should put that out there. He did it. I really he did don't. It. You exposed my spirit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Alexander the Great is jealous. How will I, face I know, my Alexander the Great is very jealous. Mine's very such jealous. a good name because he's like a real person. <laughs> so. Who conquered a many. That sounds boring. So, wait a minute. King. Hold on a second. Really? So, so King David's a fake guy? so smooth, brother. <laughs> Sensei is not fake. Sensei is not fake. Well, I mean, it's not... King David's is real. King David's pretty real. Ask him by it. That was a real person. Oh, you can't, because King worlds. David slammed him. <laughs> Alexander the Great conquered in multiple, many worlds. <laughs> So back to, so, so back to uh, <laughs> him conquering this world. Um, so let's go back to real estate, guys. 
So you got your license, you did it up. Tell me something that you feel like you went through that was kind of in the beginning of your career, right? That was kind of like an eye opener for you. Something that you kind of just like punched you dead in the face and you were like, holy crap, man, this is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. So I came to Miami after being in Oregon for five years, although I grew up in Miami for the most part anyway. And coming, uh, coming here after five years, Miami has completely changed. And when I left, I was probably like 20 years old, 20 something years old. Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, um, coming here and not knowing the market or what I'm showing was a big deal. And at that moment, I, I had, I remember having a really big client, uh, a big attorney, and I had to show him places. And he would ask me questions about certain locations close to where he was looking at. And I was like, oh my gosh, how in the world am I gonna do this? You know, like how am I gonna show myself to be a reliable person if I don't know every inch of Miami, you know? And uh, honestly, a lot of, um, I don't know that I can say that on the radio, but I definitely showed as if I knew. I know I can relate to you. Um, you know, you moved here from Oregon. I came from New York City. I had never been in real estate before, let alone was I, familiar with Miami outside of you know vacationing you here worse. yeah you so I had no idea where I was going um, and I can totally relate to people asking questions um, when I was still le learning the business let alone the areas oh is this a good area where is this close to and I just I had no idea what I was talking about or what was even like I where remember, I was, you know, it was, it was literally GPS to get somewhere. You'd be like, oh, yeah. like now someone could say something to me. I have, you know, my bearings, but I remember then, the time I mean, you came up like, to, to us and you're like, where's Doral? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You did not I'm that. white, in case you guys don't know. I'm Caucasian descent. You can check him out on Facebook. That, you can check him out on Facebook Live right there. He, I am a white. Caucasian descent. Yeah, oh so goodness. I did not. I was like, how hey, far guys. is Doral? I was like, Doral. <laughs> and I was like, I think she's still facing chasing D Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. So, I mean, that's just dying. a prime example of me not knowing anything. I, it's tough, you know, so to, to I, get into this and not know what you're doing, let alone in the business or in a new area for those who are moving <clears throat> around or starting somewhere new. It's difficult. It takes a long time to get your grip. So I want to I want to touch on what you guys discussed, but I want to hear from Eric. Do you have like a like an eye opener, smack in the face, punch in the nose kind of like situation where you feel like you were like, wow, wait a minute. In this business, I mean, in my particular case, it's a little different because I come from a long history of uh, business background and it's a very hostile environment. And it's probably, you know, one of the most hostile environments I've ever come from. So it's like you walk into work with a revolver in each hand with your back up against the wall and people are trying to shank you all day long. He was a cowboy. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it, was like, it was like the Wild West. It was like the Wild West, man. So I'm not seeing this field is any easier. It's just different, but I, I don't have any big eye openers. I, I'm, I've been beat up for quite some time in the other business I was His in. Eyes have been so you know, I was I was actually expecting some of this, and it's. I thought it was going to be easier than what it is. Oh, be but quiet! It's not, Listen, it's rough. you were in the office. Okay, so I've obviously been there throughout the process that these guys have started. Okay, <laughs> sure and I've had to you know help them out throughout that um, as well. I gotta give myself some credit. Okay, so anyway. So anyway, I remember Eric doing the cold calls. Oh my god! Oh, that was the first day. That, that was weird. But that is what yeah, he's asking. That okay. was crazy. That was in the middle of the office around a bunch of people. People and cold crowd, you're supposed to be comfortable and just you know talk and hear your voice. Yo, I was in a corner whispering <laughs> on the phone. I'm looking around at everybody. I was like, and then I get up and walk into the conference room, looking into a corner. People are like, what is wrong I still, with this I guy? Really like, like that either, man. Because you're like, you're trying to say something really confident, and people are like. Looking at you, looking crazy. at you, because no, they're not doing it. It's looking like looking in, deep down, you know, they're like, mm, like I hope he doesn't get that. You know what I mean? It's like I don't want you to when get the, that. When I get hung up on or something gets nasty said to me, and I hang up, I'm like, oh man, that was bad. And then you hear somebody turn around. Wow, that sounded pretty rough. I'm like, okay. <laughs> thanks. And yeah, I, know, I know who said that too. I know who probably said that too from the office in the corner. Yes, <laughs> that was a rough one. Thank you, thank you, guy. I know, I was there. Thank you. Thank oh you for God. the the boosties and the nosebleeds back there. And I'm no easier either. <laughs> yeah, Thank you from the nosebleeds. Oh my God.
Awesome. Like, That's awesome. Great. No, Eric so, was so red. Like, he was just so uncomfortable. He, and then he came back the next day with a vengeance. Yes. Like, forget this. I'm doing this anyway. And then Bibi, yeah, the secretary at the office, she was like, dude, can he do that, like, in another room? Because <laughs> <laughs> I can't even hear my phone calls. Yeah, they, it is difficult when you're doing it in the office, in the bullpen, when it's packed, and you're, like, really trying bullpen. to be aggressive on the phone, and you're... You know, well, this is what we do, you know, because sometimes people, Cause battle I feel, you. people battle you. Yeah, bit, you know, you know and you I get, feel. And people are like, trying, I feel. You know, they're on the or they give you tips like, from the background. Like, hey, hey listen, I feel more comfortable with that. I really do. I feel more comfortable David is a putting up. Yeah, I feel. I feel He's more comfortable yeah. in the bullpen than I do in private. When I'm in private, I find ten other things to do. Yeah. When I'm in the bullpen, I feel like I'm under the microscope, so I really got to do well. You know what I mean? And if I can hang up that phone call and go, yes, I got the appointment, and I'm in, and everybody's like, background. you know? Yeah, and but listen, bro. Out of the every, of any yeah, but the numbers, the numbers, out of like every hundred phone calls, you're going to get one yes. So you got to yes. go like 99 just gotta, I just personally <laughs> hope that everybody's finally in the room when I get that one yes, right? Be the best, no, the best my, luck, my luck will be that everybody leaves for the day and then I get the yes. And I'm no, like, did y'all hear that? Where'd everybody go? <laughs> I don't know if you heard me, but I made over a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> no, the worst is when people go and they're like, I don't know how you do that. That's so oh hard. It like never works. <laughs> or, or you it's, really made a mistake. it's a little like a slow turn. Like, I'm literally banking everything on this. Just get out of here. Just get out of here. Keep your, leave me alone. Hey, hey, look, I love a naysayer. I absolutely love a naysayer. Because every naysayer that says, oh my God, what are you doing? That doesn't work. I go, go check the board in my office. Yeah. Go check the board in my office. Look at the numbers. Look at the numbers. Then whip out your numbers and let's talk about this. Right? Because at the end of the day, what is this business really about? Consistency? Yeah. Follow up yeah. and relationships. Yeah. That's basically it as it broken yeah, down Barney style. Yeah. That's basically what this business is about. It's about building relationships. People need to trust you yeah. Yeah. in this business. It's about follow up. If you forget to follow up, people don't know you exist. Period in the story. Yeah, man, right? And persistence, the consistency. Absolutely. If you do something that works, right? You don't stop doing what works. Yeah. You keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it until, I don't know, you're a multimillionaire and we decide to retire. We were talking about that today. We had some material that said, um, you know, no calling spires, don't cold call. And I said to Dale, I was like, is this for real? And he was like, yeah, but, you know, I can show you 10 other things that say to do it. But, I mean, looking at this, I'm saying, wow, you know, because I, I do do that. And I've had a... Yeah, so mean, what Alex is talking about, we that. picked up... Um, <laughs> Orlando Montiel's new book, right? Orlando Montiel's new book, he interviewed about eight or nine agents, good, powerful, strong agents, and he said, these guys don't cold call, they don't door knock, they, it was kind of like, the book was saying, get out of that old mentality and mm -hmm. get into this new mentality, right? That's kind of what the book was saying. And so I agree and disagree with that because I feel like the old thing worked really well. So, I've had success. I think it would continue working, right? It's just like, you Did know how I always about say. Them hiring somebody to do the no, no, not at all. It's just not something that's in their business, you know, their, model. their, their model. And so I think to myself, I can pull out amazing YouTube videos of people who cold call. I can pull out books about cold calling and the right way to do it. I mean, shoot, one time uh, we went to, I was at Keller Williams and we went to the family reunion right and and we heard this guy speak um the guy that the movie pursuit of happiness was was made about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i remember him speaking and he put up his hand and he had his index finger was crooked it was uh, like crooked to the side like like an awkward crooked you know and he said everybody see that finger right there how crooked it is and we we're like wow that's pretty weird you know and he said right that thing. finger right there is crooked because when i was cold calling there were rotary phones mm -hmm. And basically, that finger's like that from turning the wheel a thousand, millions, thousand, millions, 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 millions of times. times. Imagine, what is it, seven numbers seven to a numbers, phone number? Yeah, and long. you're calling, you know, hundreds of phone calls a day, you know, cold calling and doing it up. And so he just, like he said, you know, I would get on there and I would turn that wheel and turn that wheel and turn that wheel. And I would go see people and I would fight and fight and fight. And the guy's a success. 
Imagine the statistics right. to that. Like you're talking about calling phone, phones in on an automatic dialer. <clears throat> not no no no. No, I'm saying for uh, what we have now, an uh, automatic, uh, yeah. um, automatic dialer. But those versus, phones were at oh, home. Yeah. Those people were at home. In order for them to answer that phone, he had to call a million times in order for him to actually get them. Get in touch versus with people at that, home or at their office. Cell phones. Numbers. We have and, cell phones. And, and listen, we got cell phones. We got home loan phone home loans home phones. <laughs> we and, also have those. Yeah, we, <laughs> we can get you one. We offer home loans more. <laughs> I don't insurance, yeah. Um, but the 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 back then you had to get past what what's called the gatekeeper for what he was doing, mm -hmm. and the gatekeeper for what he was doing was the CEO's secretary. If you couldn't get past the secretary, you, you couldn't get to the CEO. So it was like a double hit. Not only were you cold calling, but you had to convince the secretary that you were worth speaking to. And then maybe she would transfer you to CEO, and then you had to convince the CEO that 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 that, that you have the service that, that you had the they service want, yeah. that they needed, that you you were the right company to buy stocks from, you know, and so it was a double hit. We don't even have that problem, no. you know. So let me ask you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going here because I um I want to keep talking about a few things. So. We talked about what people thought about when you took this career path. I don't know. Did we talk to you about no. that? No. Alex? No, we didn't talk to you. Jen I hogged the mic. Yeah, I Jen totally, totally did. did. <laughs> Eric, Jen's I know so for you, it. I'm curious with you because I know Eric, I, I know Alex's story a little bit. I know, you know, everybody kind of applauded you like you're, you're moving to Miami, right? Oh, like it was, it was a big deal. deal. And so, because you left to another state, you were doing yeah, something I mean, completely different. You were taking a big step, yeah. you know? But for Eric, Eric, is a business owner. So I'm curious, like when you went to your friends and family and you said, you know, and we share a lot of the same friends, so I can't wait to hear this answer. But uh, <laughs> when you said, hey, guess what? I'm gonna, you know, quit what I'm doing, go get my real estate license, go work with Dave. Like, what did people think? Everybody was like, what? wrong with you aren't you very comfortable right now i was like yeah but you know i just wanted to and venture you have a business. successful business i do i do i live i live comfortable you know it's nice um i didn't have to go out and get my real estate license i i wanted to i wanted to venture out into something that i can do on my own because it's a family business and you know not that i don't appreciate everything but it's just kind of nice to go out there on your own and actually create something on your own you know and you're, you're really proud of something i like got uh, my mom's always backed me up on that. My family's always backed me up on that. My friends were a little bit shocked because they've always known me and the trucking company that I have, and it's uh, a real blue collar type of job. So they're like, "Really, you're gonna be in a suit?" And I'm like, "Yeah." What's wrong with that? <laughs> you know what's funny is I was friends with you for about five, six years before I even knew what you did. Yeah, <laughs> I had no idea what you did for a living. I, I rarely talk about my personal life when it comes to like things like that because um, I find it that. People are very judgmental, and when they know whether you're well off or you're not, they pass judgment on that. So I, uh, you know, Immediately. I mean, uh, yeah, exactly. It's like what Alex was saying, like, oh, you're a realtor? Here's yeah. the bill, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so you're with Douglas Elliman? Here's my friend's bill, too, yeah. you know? <laughs> so it's 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 definitely a, an image yeah. that, that people tend to portray, and, you know. So that's also a side effect of the real estate picture that all realtors want to paint real estate's the only business you could go lease a car you can't afford and say it paints the picture of success <laughs> you know, so hey listen it, you know what we're, I mean? we're, like, we're gonna so. take a quick break but i want to talk about that when we get back <laughs> we'll awesome. be right back Say what's up to everybody on Facebook. We got viewers. What's up? Double Miss America wave. That's two. That's three right here. Oh, three. Say what up. Hi. No matter your price point, there's a specialist on our team that knows how to sell your home or find Thanks, everyone, for watching. Ari's watching. No way. Yeah. Hi, babe. Hola, Hi, babe. Hi, babe. Hi, babe. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to the Curse Team Real Estate Radio Show. We appreciate you, as always, listening to our show. Uh, today, we've been talking a lot about getting into the real estate business, the kind of things that kind of go on your first year in the business, I would say. 
um, you know, I, I didn't even really get to touch on some of the things that I went through. And I want to touch on some because when we when we left off, you were talking about the the only <laughs> business that you lease in a car that you cannot afford just to paint the to picture, just to justify yeah. Yeah, the symbol of success. And unfortunately, uh, we live in a city that looks at that. See, you know, yeah. I wouldn't say unfortunately, it is what it is. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. We live in a city that looks at that kind of stuff. Everybody you know? wants to be the ultra luxury high end realtor. And in order, everybody feels necessarily that, you, you know, obviously you may not be able to have the Rolls Royce like your client, but you also don't want to seem. You don't want to no. have the Corolla. You, yeah, you want. You like want a, not that there's anything wrong with like Corolla. Like yeah, no, it is what it is. Like it's got to. You got to have some flash. I have this because I'm good at what I do. Yeah, definitely. Symbol. Yeah. That's the picture that X person paints. Yeah. How many you know realtors do we know that that drive a S550 Porsche, and live in a condo and, or yeah. a Porsche or Lambo or whatever, and they're struggling for that next deal, yeah. you know? And it just paints a a picture. So, you know. On that note, I think that when somebody's hiring a real estate professional, they should ask, like, hey, what have you done? What are your numbers like? You know? Yeah. And don't be afraid to ask that. You know, when somebody comes and you interview them as a real estate professional, say, have you sold in my neighborhood? Okay? Um, you know, what are your numbers like? How many homes did you sell last year? How, what, what, what value of homes did you sell last year? Have you ever sold anything in my price point, in my value? You know, maybe you have a $30 million home and you're interviewing somebody that specializes in $200,000 homes, you may not get the service that you need, yeah. you know? Uh, what kind of outlets does your realtor have? What kind of, you know, exposure does your realtor have? Yeah. What kind of networking, com you know, what kind of, of people do they know? Like, yeah. it, all of this really does matter. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it doesn't happen instantaneously, you know? It's like the quote that I, I said this morning, and I read it all the time, I see it all the time. It's a quote that says, if you think it's expensive to hire a professional, wait till you hire an amateur, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? And so on that note, what would you say, because Jen, you started by yourself. Mm -hmm. You guys started with a team. I always say, Personally, if I could turn back time, I would join a team. I wish I would have joined a, a, a team immediately, you know, um, but I was definitely, as a matter of fact, I approached you and I asked you why, because you had somebody else that had just walked into the office and you took her into your team. And I go, why did you take her in and you didn't even give me an option? Uh, and then you, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, whatever, I'm dating her now. Yes. <laughs> and you looked at me and you said, well, this is what I do with my team. You just, you know, you're, you don't, it doesn't <clears> seem like something that you would have wanted to do. And I looked at him and I said, no, you're right. I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Nice. yeah, I gave, you know, I gave her the breakdown, you know? Uh -huh. And so I think that, that you guys, have an advantage because you never mistake. win on your own. No, it's definitely true. I feel like, um, you know, within my first year, I definitely fell on my face more than once. And I think everybody does to a certain extent when, when you're just starting, especially something, you know, if you're in a new city or learning something that you don't know anything about. Um, you know, obviously, you're going to hit your, your speed bumps, you're going to fail, uh, and you're going to fail 10 times more. And I'll fail 100 times more. You know, it's just you got to keep growing, keep learning. It's not a failure if you learn something from the experience. But I've definitely picked up faster than I know I know that I would have yeah if I had started alone and tried to do things in a different way just having David and watching other people and being with element and seeing the the rights and the wrongs and then there's also you know like we were just talking about painting the picture you know David says it all the time don't compare your don't compare your insides to someone else's, else's outside you know like it's it's a very it's very true in Miami a lot of real estate brokers are doing amazing and the picture they paint is real but many are not yeah and do not be fooled it by just it boils down to you know truly interview your agent yeah. you know truly I, truly interview i've got to tell you i mean maybe i was an overachiever at that time but you know it was a i think a big mistake i probably would have done uh would have been in a better situation my first year had i considered uh, entering a team and actually learning the ropes versus me trying to granted I did learn a lot because you know everything is an experience anyway but um, it, should I have been in a team it would have been so much easier I never joined a team 
And and so if I could turn back time, I think that that's something that I absolutely would have done. Yeah. I absolutely would have joined a team. I would have done things differently. So my advice to any new real estate <clears> professional <throat> out there or any real estate professional that feels like they need more in their business than they don't feel like they want to do it on their own, join a team. Yeah. Be a part of a team. I mean, I have experienced agents on my team. Be a part of a team. Yeah. Get out there. Go do it. You know, get the experience, learn the ropes, learn the systems, teach yourself, learn, absorb, soak it in. It's really in every book, whether real estate related or not, success leaves clues. Find somebody you like, you admire, you respect where they are. and and Somebody has the blueprint already. You don't have to copy them, but exactly, there is a blueprint there. You can emulate their habits. There's habits to success that are definitely, definitely, definitely embedded in every single one of Every single successful person, yes, do they do different things? Is it a different business? Do they have a different approach to it? But essentially, there is foundation yeah. that is the same, whether There's you're in one business or the next. You have to find something that works for everybody. It works for a reason. You know? yeah. I'll tell you that, that I, I, again, I wish that I would have joined a team. I think that some of my um, aha moments, I would say, or moments in my career that I that I wish I would have avoided the failures that I had was in developing a team because I had never been a part of a team. So I I learned the real estate business on my own. And then when I learned the real estate business, I decided I wanted to build a team. I wanted to take things to the next level and I wanted to do things. And no matter what books told me, I kind of decided I wanted to do this my way, right? You know, forget the fact that the guy that wrote the book was running like massive amounts of teams doing massive amounts of business. I thought, no, no, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it this way. And, And I failed at least 10 times at developing a team, you know? And so it took a long time for me to really, I guess, absorb what it was to build a team and then now we have like the all-star team that we have now i feel like i have the new york yankees of of real estate well actually you're you're a boston fan so yes it it matters it absolutely matters it totally matters (laughs) it totally matters yeah no it totally matters Listen, I was I started in the team. No, you're not allowed to talk on radio anymore. We only have 30 seconds left, and I don't want to waste it. Goodness. So I moved over. Daggone Boston fans. I know you guys can't see. Dang Boston fans. Here, if you're on Facebook Live, I want you to see the distance between Boston and New York right there. The next time you guys need anything, I'm no longer available. Whatever. I don't want your help, Big Poppy. That's why we have a team. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have a lot of time left. Thank you for listening into our radio show. You can reach us at 786-529-5273. You can catch us at www.thecursteam.com or www.thecursteam.element.com. Click on our charities page. Help us donate money to the Children's Cancer Caring Center and the Veterans Association of Real Estate Professionals. Thanks again for listening in. Great show, guys. That's five minutes early? Huh? Five minutes early. Yeah, that's when it ends. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, because they have to do commercials, and then we switch over with the other group. Negative. <laughs> it's a dumpster in here. Wish you liked it. It's a dumpster. <laughs> that was a good one. I liked it. Bring them on the show boards. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. I like how we're all cracking up and the producers like that. And Facebook Live is still on. Thank you everybody for listening to the show. We love you guys, man. Thank you so much. She's so monotone.